Oh god, this game. Ahem, my humble apologies for the delay. Court is now back in session. The shocking truth revealed Chizero Fukuza is a boy. Now let's see where you go, guys go with that. I'm tongue tied today. I don't know why he chose to dress like that, but no, but one thing is certain: Chizero, Chihiro Fujizaki was male, not female. It never occurred to me that Fujizaki could be a boy. It completely slipped me unnoticed. With the victim being male, he would have had no problem gaining access to the men's changing room. If his electric ID identified him as a male, then yes, you're right. You betcha, Fujizaki was a cross-dresser, so of course his electric ID said he was male. In which case, there are no problems with Nagi's line of reasoning. The victim was murdered in the men's changing room, after which he was moved to the women's. Access in the women's changing room is simple. He just needed either Maizuna or Enoshima's electro ID. Then it's true, Fujizaki was actually killed in the men's changing room. We still don't know why the culprit relocated the crime scene, but yes, it seems quite likely. I see. I thought something felt off. See, it's not him. He didn't. He was surprised by all of this. Uh, it's not him. Uh, I want to kill him. I couldn't help thinking something was strange about the way his body felt for a woman. I'm getting kind of turned on by this. Calm your tits. <laughs> but this finally ties everything together. All my questions have been cleared up. Why should you by having your questions answered when you're our prime suspect? Ha! Huh, excellent! Truly magnificent! Oh my oh my. He's been whisked away to another world. What do you think, Nagi? After all this, do you th still think Togami did it? I have no doubt in my mind Togami was responsible for dis 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 squish disguising Fujizaki's death as a work of genocide or show. Wow, I feel very bad for not reading disguising right. What the hell happened in my brain? However, however I... I don't think Togami is the killer. Uh... What? Even though you were the proponent of the theory, Master Makoto Nagi. The way he seemed to be egging me on earlier, it was like he was enjoying having his mysteries solved. Like he didn't have anything to worry about. I can only imagine he was able to act like that. Because he didn't actually have anything to worry about. On top of that, the evidence Togami left was kind of, you know, a little too blatant. Like he intentionally used the extension cord as a way to lead us back to him. At least that's the, how I see it. You dick, you changed the crime scene for no reason other than your sick pleasure! Ugh. What's more, you obviously caught off guard when you were discovered that the murder actually happened, as well as when you learned Fujizaki was a boy. If you were really the killer, neither of those should have come as a surprise to you. I see, alright, I'm a little concerned by your lack of decisive evidence. But I suppose that's good enough, we'll go with your answer being correct. Ugh, someone hit him. Hit him hard! Correct. Just as Nagi says, I'm not the culprit. And I happened to stumble upon his body in the women's changing room, and I modified the scene. That's all. You're- you shitting me, man. I'm not shitting anyone. It's true. Who- who could believe that? If you don't want to believe me, by all means, you're just sending us all to our deaths. If you're saying is- if what you're saying is true, then why would you do that? Why would you mess with his body? My reason is unimportant. What matters is in finding the culprit. Nagi, if I didn't kill him, then who is the culprit? I- I won't be able to say until we've talked to over a bit more. You wanna drag this out even longer? Come on, man. No matter how you slice it, Togs is the killer. Togs? Togs? What? You should discuss anything that doesn't sit right with anyone, so you can count me in, Nagi. If we come to the wrong conclusion here, then all of us will be executed. She's exactly right. I too shall participate in the discussion. I'm down too, dudes. I have- have you no independent thought? I'm no insect, of course I can think for myself! Anyway, let's keep the conversation going. We don't need to come to a decision right this moment. Indeed, you have a point. Our lives are on the line. Then let's recommence this murder mystery game. If Togami really isn't the murderer, then who is? Who killed Fujizaki? At the very least, the one thing we can say for sure is about the, is about the culprit is that they had access to the crime scene, which means they must have been... Male. You need a male's electro ID to get to the men's changing room, which was the scene of the crime. Since Kuwa's electro ID was out of commission, the culprit must have used their own, meaning the culprit has to be male. But in, I, there's not enough to go off of. I need more clues. <sighs> it's not Tagami. Ooh, a testimony. <laughs> By the way, we can still like use other people's words to refute. Uh, no leads. I think that's the wrong one. Uh, did anyone witness the culprit? If they did, they would have said something, dude. Uh, the victim will do as well. 
any new information. <sighs> I hate the stupid... Stupid cursor like movement. Um, the murders on a victim was the culprit, dude. Nope. Uh, get rid uh, I have to get rid of the. I have to get rid of the damn chatter before. Uh, before I stop time. Oh, I hate this so much. Just so much. Skipping, 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 skipping. More skipping. Frack. I missed again. I hate my lack of aim. Fuck. No! No! Ah! Uh, oh my god, this game is making me rage. I don't want to rage. I can't hit anything for shit. Oh, come on, keep going. On! Damn it! Stupid cursor! Ugh. This is so difficult. I wish I could use the mouse for the cursor instead. I really need to get a gamepad. Come on, come on, come on. No! Oh, I hit the wrong button. Shit. Damn it. I didn't mean to hold the button. Uh, the difference between holding the button and pressing the button is going to kill me. Yes! Did it! Ah! Uh. Finally! I'm not a very patient person. Oh, it can go down to 8 minutes. I still get a high score. Nice. Actually, the culprit isn't the only one who saw the victim that night. Isn't that right, Celeste? Now that you mention it, you're right. I did see him. Huh? Seriously? Ah, uh, yes, that's right. Naki was the only person I told about this. That would explain why you were all so horribly disconcerted. No one else knew. That's not important. Just speak! Just before curfew last night, I ran into him in the dormitory storeroom. He was carrying a sports bag containing, at, at the very least, a tracksuit. I presume he was going to work out. A sports bag and a tracksuit? We found nothing of the sort at the crime scene. In all likelihood, the culprit disposed of them in order to get rid of any evidence. Not long after that, he said something rather interesting. Well, I'm in a hurry, so see you later. I distinctly, uh, I distinctly recall him saying he was in a hurry. Wouldn't him being in a hurry simply imply that he was going to meet someone? In short, Master Chihiro Fujizaki was on his way to an appointment with someone to work out together. Despite the fact that, as hard as we tried, Fujizaki refused to work out with Asahina and I. Isn't that cause he didn't want to find out that he was a dude? Turning that around, it means that the person he was going to meet was someone he trusted deeply. Oops, wrong button again. Enough that he didn't care if they discovered his deep, dark secret. Ooh, ooh, such a beautiful friendship. So basically, the person he was going to meet is the culprit, and we just have to find out who that was. But we only have so much evidence that isn't, is that really enough? Oh, but it is. What? It should be clear by now who the culprit is. Uh, really? Who is it? Who killed him? The culprit considered the sports bag and attracts it he disposed it to be items of importance. By looking at the distinguishing features of those turn items, I think it would be obvious who he met who it was he met with. Is that really so? Could we possibly determine the culprit from evidence that he has already disposed of? Kinda. Are you suggesting we dust for fingerprints? Without proper equipment, and that would be impossible for amateurs such as ourselves. Never mind the fact that we don't have anything to check for fingerprints, since it's already been disposed of. We can still deduce who he was going to meet by discussing it in detail, together. That's easier said than done. Alright then, Celeste. Could you answer this? Did anything about the bag or tracksuit stand out? If the bag was just an ordinary bag, you can find the storeroom. The storeroom only stocks one variety of bag, so I can't say it's to say anything in particular. If memory serves, there are several varieties of tracksuit. Perhaps then Fujizaki's tracksuit can provide us with some information leading to the murder. Then let's discuss his tracksuit, shall we? 
Could there really be something about Fujizaki's tracksuit that points to the killer? I'm having a hard time believing that. Oh yeah. Time to do this. Celeste's testimony. Is that the only is that the only thing we have? Well. Uh Fusto Fuzaki. It was going to work out, yes. Which raises the question. Why did he select that particular tracksuit? What do you mean that particular tracksuit? I get it, he chose his tracksuit. So he, he and the culprit would match. <laughs> Which means the culprit had a blue tracksuit at the same time. BANG! No one said any color! No one said any color! Gotta pay attention guys, cause if you don't, you won't pick that up, because literally, no one said any color before. You have to pay attention to everything. It's really hard to do that. Just a second, Iwata. There's something wrong about what you just said. Huh? What's wrong with it? When Celeste was giving her testimony earlier... Again... She never met once mentioned the tracksuit's color. Why, then, did you know that Fujizaki wore a blue tracksuit? What are you talking about? Celeste, what color was Fujizaki's tracksuit? It was blue! Look at it! I can see it. And did you tell that to anyone before the class trial? You were the only person I told, Nagi. That, then when did you find out that Ch Chihiro Fujizaki wore a blue tracksuit, Owada? Uh, well... He must have found Fujizaki's tracksuit at some point during his investigation. No, he couldn't have. The back-end tracks would have already been disposed of when we began our investigation. Then the reason he knew what color it was, is because he saw Chi before he died! By Chi, do you mean Fujizaki? So which was it? Did you see his tracksuit or didn't you? I, I just happened to run into him last night and catch a glimpse of it. The kid was walking around carrying it. No, that couldn't have happened either. When, was, when I was talking to Celeste, she told me. She quickly stuffed the sleeve into her back into her bag, almost like she was trying to hide it. And then she left. After, then after telling him that his tracksuit was hanging out, Fujizaki stuffed it into his sports bag. And even if he had just stumbled onto him, he couldn't know the color of the tracksuit inside his bag. Ugh. It was you, wasn't it? You've dug your own grave. More like you led him to his grave, that's why you said what you did, isn't it? Your spiel about knowing who Fujizaki met with was by looking at his tracks it was all a bunch of crap. I see, so that was a bluff, was it? Your true intention was to cause the culprit to misspeak. That's why you said you knew who the culprit was, to scare him. That's right, except I always had my sights on Huwada. I was suspicious of him from the beginning. I really don't see the connection between Huwada and the crime. What do you think? How he refers to people? Did, like something change? The reason I suspect you, Owada, is probably something you do unconsciously. You refer to males and females differently. When talking about a woman, you call her a chick. When speaking out of a man, you call him kid. After Chihiro Fujizaki was murdered, Uwada started referring to him as kid. That's when it struck me, that Uwada knew Chihiro Fujizaki was male. You know such a minuscule detail? What are you, a woman? Some kind of witch? Scary. I'm not... What the hell? I'm not the one you should be afraid of. What you should really be afraid of are of the people who kill others, who kill their friends. Gah. Uwada, is this true? Did you really murder Fujizaki? I... 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 I didn't kill anyone! What the hell's your problem anyway? I make one little slip of the tongue, have one little brain fart, and all of a sudden you're calling me the culprit? Yeah, really. There's nothing but baseless accusations. Bro would never do such a thing. You have a point. It's hardly decisive evidence. You're already backing down. What other choice do we have? We have nothing else to go off of. Oh ho ho, it is my time to shine. Just a whisper. I hear it in my ghost. What? You mean your spirit? Your soul? Oh yeah, you mentioned you found some evidence pointing to the culprit before, didn't you, Yamada? Did you really? What you find? Actually, thinking about it a little more, it might not actually mean anything. Don't fizzle out unless like that man. Just come on, let's see it, alright? Well, if you insist. Um, here it is. And, what's that? It is an Electro ID. I found it on the floor, so I picked it up. He found an Electro ID. It must belong to... I think it was Chihiro's that was missing. As I recall, Fujizaki's Electro ID wasn't found at the scene of the crime, was it? 
Yes, that is correct. I knew I was right! I thought it might be the case, but this might be Master Chihiro Fujizaki. That'll give us some kind of clue leading to the culprit, right? I had the same idea, but alas, it's broken and won't even start up. It's likely after committing the murder, the culprit broke it in an attempt to destroy the evidence. That's strange though, Electro IDs are not easy to break. You got that right! They're completely waterproof and with a very high impact resistance, so they shouldn't break in everyday use. And yet his Electro ID is broken, as was Kawata's in the, electro in the entrance hall. Wouldn't you say they're breaking a little too often, for as highly as you praise them? Oop oop oop, truth is there's a bit of mystery for you there. So here's a question, oh, why oh why do the Electro IDs break? Why did the Electro IDs? Uh, they have a weakness. You told me so. Marakuma, you told Togami and I that the Electro IDs have a weakness. Crap, you remembered that? Yeah, I might have accidentally let that slip, but I never told anyone what the weakness actually was. But for two Electro IDs, which are not supposed to break under normal stress to be found broken, the only reasonable conclusion is that someone discovered their weakness. You know what it is, don't you, Monokuma? What is the weakness? What? You want me to tell? Th I think it's a vital piece of information, and it would be fair to withhold that from us. But what if I tell you and someone goes and tries it themselves? I don't want to have to deal with that. Come on, tell us. We won't try it, we promise. Ooh, fine. I have a soft spot for pleading, but seriously, don't try this at home, kids. Very well, but this is a special occasion. The almighty Electroide's one and only weakness is that extended exposure to high temperatures causes a thermal runway, runaway, destroying it. As I thought, as you thought, I found this Electroide in the sauna! Isn't it kind of weird how you don't get burned in the sauna when temperatures can exceed 100 degrees Celsius? This is because as your sweat evaporates into the air, it causes a protective layer around your skin. Incidentally, if you blow hot air directly on your skin while in the sauna, you will get burned. That's because it disturbs the air around your skin, which is, is also why it hurts to move around in the sauna. For that reason, you must take care to remain still and quiet in the sauna. Fascinating, I feel smarter. So do I, I did not know that. I'll make a note next time I go into a sauna. This was a completely useless piece of trivia. Not if you frequent saunas. But hey, if the victim's Electro ID was found in the sauna, maybe they put it there on purpose, intending to break it by taking advantage of its weakness. Then the culprit must have known the weakness. But how do you figure it out then? Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone. Hmm, tis a mystery indeed. And what if he accidentally discovered it? What do you mean, accidentally? Oh my gosh, it's starting to form in my head who did it. The culprit could have, through some turn of events, accidentally broken his own Electro ID in the sauna. But then, having discovered the Electro ID's weakness, he was able to repeat that a second time with Chihiro Fujizaki's. That's certainly possible, but then, who did it? I can't imagine anyone else who would bring their Electro ID into the sauna. But I can. Yup, remember the two guys who went into the sauna? Yep. You, you for real? I can think of one person who might have brought their Electro ID into the sauna. Oh no. There's only one person who might have brought their Electro ID into the sauna. That person entered the sauna with their clothes still on. 